Everybody knows that the greatest video game series of all time is Pikmin, but at the same time, being a Pikmin fan is a frustrating experience because they only put out a game every hundred years. The wait between Pikmin 0 and 1 was 2001 years, 1 and 2 was 3 years, 2 to 3 was 9 years, and 3 to 4 was 10. Don't get me wrong, I feel strongly that Pikmin 4 was an incredible game and was my personal game of 2023, but good lord, did that game take a long time to come out. And because they take so long to come out, it makes perfect sense that it would eventually develop an active fan game community. Series like Pikmin that almost never get new video games are the ones that need fan games the most and we've already seen some pretty good ones out there. We got Pikmin 251, Bikmin 269 starring Mr. Krabs, we got the Caveless Edition that removed the caves for people who just hate going underground, and today we got Pikmin 216 or Pikmin 216. This is a game that was shown off at last year's F3 show, and I was hoping to put it in the Christmas marathon, but the release date was unfortunately pushed back too far for that to happen. I figured that instead of waiting for the next marathon, I'd just play it now. This is a big, beefy burger of a ROM hack, a game that's easily as big as the original, and a lot of the content is completely new. New levels, new treasures, new dialogue, new music, new Louie, new graphics, and all new challenge mode. I'm telling you, this is like DLC, which is my favorite type of ROM hack. I'm always very impressed by the sheer volume of new stuff that ROM hackers end up adding to these games. I can still remember when the average ROM hack could be beaten in like 20 minutes. I've been in business a long time, you know. The story of the game takes place after the events of Pikmin 2, but is more or less a retread of that story, except this time President, or Sacho, or whatever we're calling him, actually got 20,000 Pocos in debt like a complete dumbass. So he sends Olimar and Louie right back, specifically instructing Louie not to get left behind again. Guess what happens? Throughout the game, tons of different characters contact you via email asking you to join the Pikmin ROM hacking discord, but then Olimar clicks on the wrong link and gets his account stolen. I made that part up, but y'all gotta be very careful about those discord links, alright? Fundamentally, the gameplay is mostly the same as the original, but there are some new tweaks to some of the Pikmin stats like their damage and speed. So even for people who have played Pikmin 2 3,000 times like I did, there are some new things to learn. One of the things that always impresses me about Pikmin mods is how the maps are usually heavily remixed versions of the existing maps from the base game, yet somehow they always manage to make them feel like new areas. The level of rearrangements, the graphical reworkings, and the addition of new hazards and set pieces make it feel like a new place altogether. But as usual, it's the caves that steal the show. There are so many visually robust stages that it'll definitely grab your attention. Lighting is used in very expressive ways, heightening the atmosphere to impressive levels often not seen in the original. There are a lot of areas that look much unlike anything you'll see in the official games, tons of environments and biomes that fly completely out of left field. Of course, some of them are familiar to the originals, like these tiny little garden areas with the hollowed out tree stumps and logs with the lighting that makes it look like you're walking around in the moonlight. But then you got these crazy circuit board areas looking like Super Paper Mario and the Matrix dimension where the floor is invisible. You have this magical level with all these floating crystals in the air and these trippy space levels where you are walking amongst the cosmos while getting absolutely demolished by a fucking thing. That's the scientific name. This game's take on the submerged castle envelops the entire surroundings in this oppressive darkness, which is exactly what we need in the Water Wraith area. Especially now that they move faster than in the original game, oh god. One of my favorites is this one, where everything is fiery red rocks and it's literally like a descent deeper and deeper into the pits of hell. In terms of enemies, you're gonna see a lot of familiar faces, but with a heavily modified coat of paint. Some enemies have slight redesigns, one of my favorites being the big jelly floats who are now covered in stars. Now ain't that pretty. Many enemies are now tankier, and some even have upgraded attacks like these blowhogs that can now shoot fire, or these ones that actually cause your Pikmin to start panicking and running around. It's familiar, but with the element of deadly surprise, like eating pancakes with chocolate chips except they explode and break your teeth. I've always loved ROM hacks, and a big part of that is that they often end up being a big collage of things that the creator just happens to enjoy outside of the game. 
You can tell a lot about a person by what they put into their ROM hacks, and after playing all the way through this one, I'm about 40% sure that they like Mario. The Pikmin sound font is surprisingly versatile, and it's always great to see it flex its auditory muscles with the vast wealth of musical references, which come from all kinds of different sources. Recognizing the music from other games always feels like a game in and of itself. You will find a Fire Flower, a Super Mushroom, Question Block, there's an entire Mario series in the Treasure Log. Speaking of which, one of my favorite unique things about this game is that if you go into the Treasure Log, you can actually find that the developer wrote personal notes concerning every single solitary treasure, kind of inviting you into the ROM hack process as it were. Developer commentary for ROM hacks is always a very special thing, because it's important to be reminded that ROM hackers are game developers just as much as the dude who programmed the horse d in Red Dead 2. According to the notes, it took at least 1,000 hours to get this game out the door. That's insane, you could get halfway through a single dialogue tree in The Witcher 3 in that time. The notes also invite constructive criticism, which is a pretty good segue into the biggest beef I have with Pikmin 216. If there's one thing that I'm conflicted on, it would have to be the difficulty. As you should expect, and as I alluded to earlier, the game is substantially more difficult than the base game, and a lot of that difficulty is ROM hack type difficulty. Things like putting five different enemies and hazards into one place and doing that for every single corner of the map, including the boss arenas while also buffing the bosses themselves to make them faster and also this stupid fucker crab guy who can one-shot 53 Pikmin at once with a swiping motion that can happen in the blink of an eye. Fire geysers now shoot fire non-stop, forcing you to use the red Pikmin to destroy them, which isn't completely unreasonable until they put 50 of them on a single floor. On the one hand, I played Pikmin 2 a billion times, to the point that playing through that game is like drinking water. It's a trivial matter for a Pikman such as myself. So from that perspective, I can appreciate a game that takes a little more effort and really makes me put in the work. It makes for a game where I don't feel like I've played it already. I mean, it's definitely doable, right? I wouldn't be able to 100% the game if it wasn't. But I mean... What the hell? I feel like Pikmin 2 ROM hackers are very aware that a lot of the people playing the original game were save scumming anyway, so they don't overthink the difficulty too much, but even with the inclusion of some ball-bustingly baboon bastard buffoonery bullshit, I still loved playing this game. I never get tired of the Pikmin gameplay loop, and it was very exciting not knowing what kind of treasures or creatures I would find, or what kind of bizarro environment I would see next. It's definitely worth the frustrating moments, and if you're already a fan of Pikmin, it's very easy to recommend. If, like me, you still feel starved for Pikmin even after beating the entirety of Pikmin 4, here you go, it's more Pikmin starring 300 Pokeballs. Who could ask for more? Me. Please make more Pikmin wrong. <laughs>